Hello everyone, my name is Halsey. Welcome to another Sunday School lesson from the Kojak Legacy Edition. Don't forget to share, to subscribe, or even to leave a comment. This is the last lesson in Unit 2 of our Spring Quarter. And all the lessons in April has been focusing on Jesus and of the Davidic Covenant. Bible scripture for today, Sunday, April 28th, is taken from Psalm 110, verse 1 through verse 4, and Acts chapter 2, verses 22 through 24, skip to 29 through 32. Before we go into our lesson, we will have prayer. Our Father and our God, we say thank you. Thank you for yet another chance, another opportunity to share your word of truth. Thank you, Lord, that your word is the foundation of our faith. Now, Lord, help us. Help us to trust you even the more each day. Help us, O oh God, to give you all that we got. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the ability that we need to continue to trust you every day, even the more. To stand on your word every day, even the more. Even when our situations and our circumstances look differently, help us to hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering, knowing that we serve a God who is able to do exceeding a Abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think according to the power of your word that worketh in us. And we say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for every person that watches and that listens. Give understanding, Lord. Give encouragement. Give strength. And we say thank you. And as, as always, thank you for every teacher. Continue, Lord, to give strength. Continue, Lord, to give understanding. And we say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all of your many blessings and all these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This lesson is outlined and it is divided into three sections. Section one will deal with God's legacy for David. And that's Psalm 110, verse 1 through verse 4. Section 2 will deal with the past revealed, and that's Acts chapter 2, verses 22 through verses 24. Section 3 will deal with bold witnesses, and that's Acts 2, verses 29 through verses 32. The aim for this lesson is that we discuss the importance of being people of our word. And we find comfort in knowing that no matter how tough things may get, God will keep his word for our lives. And that we share what we have learned about God's faithfulness to encourage others in tough times. So... Before we go to our printed text, we'll do a little bit of recapping. Uh, in our first uh, lesson in uh, April, uh, we have talked about from suffering to glory. We also talked about an eternal kingdom. We also talked about son of David. Today, we will talk about Peter's report. And we're still in that a study of Jesus and the Davidic covenant. And so uh, Acts chapter 2, uh, it presents us with the end of the age of the Mosaic law and the beginning of the church age. Ever, ever since uh, the Israelites escaped slavery in Egypt, God had dealt with them 
with his creation primarily through the Mosaic law that he gave them. As uh, the Israelites abided by the law, God blessed them. When they broke the law, God judged them. And uh, hundreds of years of history uh, proved that the Israelites were incapable of fully keeping the law. No one can be good enough to earn God's favor. And so then God must uh, bridge the gap that caused by sin in order to bestow his forgiveness. And this is why he sent his son, Jesus Christ. With uh, Jesus' crucifixion, his burial, his resurrection, Jesus uh, was the perfect sinless sacrifice that uh, could stand in the gap caused by sin. His uh, death fulfilled the requirement that sin always bring, brings death. And in Jesus Christ, his sacrifice uh, granted us forgiveness. The Mosaic uh, law has proven over and over again that it could not save anyone. Only Jesus Christ can save. And this is the good news that we are commanded to spread. And as we go into our lesson, we will see how the Apostle Peter took time to do just that. He gave a reminder to those people who were listening. We will see how a Peter looked back and how he was able to reveal to his listeners how God worked through Jesus Christ to accomplish his purpose. And, you know, that is uh, the same way he worked through us. He saved us uh, first, and then he works through us to get the attention of others, to point them to him from their sin, to cause them to repent, to come to him. He worked through us to touch the lives of others. And that uh, is uh, the truth that we should stand on, that uh, God is victorious and his victory is sure because Jesus lives, because Jesus uh, got up out the grave. He's risen with all power in his hand. Because as we, as we go in our lesson, we'll see later on how Peter declared that not even death could keep him in the grave. Death does not have any hold on Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has power, power over death, hell, on the grave. All of it, he has power over it. And this is our good hope. When we look back uh, to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, there and there alone we will find hope and strength to live victorious lives as Christians. We will now go to section one. It will deal with God's legacy for David. And uh, that's uh, Psalm 110 verses 1 through verses 4. Reading from the King James Version, verse 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Verse 2. The Lord shall send the rod of thine strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. And so again, we're talking about a God's a legacy a through a uh, descendant of a David. And right here, this one right here is among a, one of the most quoted psalm in the New Testament because for one, 
it is clear. It's a clear reference to the Messiah. David was not talking about himself. David was pointing to the Messiah. He was talking about Jesus Christ. How we know that? Well, Jesus himself uh, cited these words and applied them to himself. If we take a look at Matthew chapter 22 and start reading at verse 41. And it says, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, 42, what do you think of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, the son of David, 43. He said unto them, how then does David in spirit call him Lord, saying, 44, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit though on my right hand till I make your enemies my footstool. 45. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? 46. And no man was able to answer him a word. Neither does any man from that day forward ask him any more questions. Did you hear that? And so we see here, uh, these verses here, uh, it, they look forward to Christ's final and total destruction of wickedness. Looking uh, forward, uh, David could imagine. He could imagine that uh, his generation would prosper so that a priest, a forever priest, could be born and rule. Remember, Jesus Christ had to come through the line of David. Back to the lesson of verse 3. Thy, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, though has the dew of thy youth. And here, uh, David uh, foretell about when the people of God, when they would see and experience the victory of their Messiah, how they will uh, show gladness and they would give themselves to his work. They would be willing in that day of his power. There will be a willingness and they uh, would be uh, gathered together as a willing army. It's pointing to the church and uh, that's what we see uh, uh, Peter will talk about in the other part of our lesson about spreading the good news of what they witnessed about the risen Christ. And, and again, uh, when we talk about God's uh, legacy uh, for David, he gave him a glimpse uh, to look forward. What was up ahead? And David could put on that imagination about uh, his generation and how his generation would prosper so that that priest forever would born. And you know, uh, same thing uh, we can look forward to. We too can preserve that generation to serve the Lord. We too can be uh, that witness, that testimony to our generation to tell of the goodness of Jesus Christ to tell of the purpose of Jesus coming, to preserve them, to serve him. We're not going to be here forever, but our children and our children's children should be able to carry on this legacy. David's a generation a could use a, this prophecy as a guide to help them understand uh, the full scope of their spiritual inheritance. Inheritance. You know, we like to say, well, we're leaving our kids this and we're leaving them uh, that, you know, in the material world. But again, the best thing that any of us could ever leave them is the gift of Jesus Christ and guide them into a personal relationship with him to carry on the legacy. You know, uh, we're living in a society that uh, is 
mainly concerned about earthly possessions and earthly inheritance. But Jesus once told his disciples uh, this. He says to them in Matthew uh, chapter 6 and verse, start looking at verse uh, 33. He said, but seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Earthly possessions and earthly inheritance is temporary. And uh, that is a part of why we have to make sure, we have to make sure these children uh, need guidance. We have to make sure we're guiding them. If they're, if they're living in our homes and we have authority over our homes, we have a responsibility to guide them to go the way they should go in our homes, sitting at our kitchen tables. If we don't do it, if we don't take charge at home and guide them into the ways of the Lord, I guarantee you someone out there will do it. Someone out there will guide them into someone else or something else and we don't have any excuses because God has given us his word to guide us in all a truth and knowing that knowing that we have a faith we have a faith in Jesus Christ that is not and can't be shaken our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is a conqueror he is all a uh, powerful he possesses all power and uh, he has secured a place for us in God eternally and Jesus uh, left us here with a mandate that is to go and spread the good news to spread the good news to this dark world but first it starts at home Back to the lesson, verse 4. The Lord, capital L-O-R-D, Yahweh, had sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And here we see how a God reinforces these promises with an oath. That this a future king uh, will be a priest. And this was not the first time we see uh, this double role. However, uh, the big uh, difference uh, here uh, is that this priest would be an eternal king priest. And the Lord sworn on it. He sworn and pledged on his own name um, and this would be an unchangeable thing an irrevocable thing the lord uh his words stand assured and it will never return to him void this uh, melchizedek who uh, whose account is in uh genesis chapter 14 we learn about them a little bit about him that after Abraham defeated uh, the confederation of kings who took his nephew Lot captive, Abraham met with uh, this mysterious priest named Melchizedek, whose name means king of righteousness and who was also king over uh, the city of Salem. And we learn that uh, Melchizedek was not uh, merely just a worshiper of the true God. He had the honor, the honored title of priest of the Most High God. And this greatness of uh, God magnified the greatness of Melchizedek's priesthood. And uh, Melchizedek 
uh, we learn that he blessed Abraham and uh, that Abraham gave him a tithe, which is a tenth part of all the, of the spoil of the battle. And that was in uh, Genesis chapter 14, also verse 20. And so here when we see uh, the, the, this verse that says, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Uh, with this oath, we see how God here revealed that there is another order of priesthood apart apart from the, the priestly order of Aaron. Aaron priestly order would stop at some point. The Israelites, our priests were all descendants from Aaron. Aaron and they serve in the tabernacle offering uh, sacrifices and conducting service uh, services according to uh, God's law. But here we see that God established another priestly order after the pattern of Melchizedek. Jesus uh, could not be an earthly priest because he was not from the Levite tribe. So then here we see God ordered a priest from another order, the order of Melchizedek. And uh, the writer of Hebrews uh, chapter 7 took this a little further. In Hebrews uh, chapter 7, I start reading at verse 19. It says, for the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw near unto God, was made, he was made a priest. 21. For those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him, who said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. 22. By so much was Jesus made a security of a better testament, and they truly were many priests, because they were not suffered to continue by the reason of death. 24. But this man, because he continues ever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Did you hear that? The priesthood of Jesus Christ uh, was not like uh, Aaron's uh, priesthood, transitioning uh, from one generation to the other. No a uh, Jesus's a uh, priesthood is fixed and it's an eternal and unchangeable fix back to the lesson we will now uh, go to section 2 and it will deals with the past revealed and that that's acts chapter 2 verses 22 through verses 24 and it says ye men of Israel hear these words Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which a God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also known, verse 23, him being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain 24 whom God had raised up having lose the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holden of it and here in chapter 2 of the book of Acts uh, we learn about the initial experience of the filling of the Holy Spirit, the pouring out of God's Spirit on uh, those that were uh, present in the upper room and causes them to speak fluently in other languages. And verse uh, 14 and 15 lets us know that 
Uh, but Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judah and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words, for these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And Peter, I hear he pulled back one of prophecies from the prophet Joel. A Peter, I hear he reminded these people that what was happening was prophesied and uh, that it was sure to happen and that it would happen through Jesus Christ. This is who these prophets uh, talked about and pointed to. And he uh, reminded them that they themselves also knew. They knew about these things. Uh, Peter, uh, he referred uh, to what uh, they already know. They knew about uh, Jesus' work. They knew about his life. They knew about all the miraculous work works that he did. Verse uh, 23 uh, lets us know that he uh, was delivered, meaning Jesus. He was delivered by the determined counsel and for knowledge of God. In other words, uh, God knew. He knew that Jesus' death was in uh, his plan. But at the same time, those who rejected him and called for his execution was was there was it responsible for the actions of their lawless hands. Everything that happened to Jesus was under God's total control. God's uh, plans were never disrupted by the Romans government or by the Jewish officials. This was and should be especially comforting to those uh, back then and to us now who are uh, facing any kinds of oppression or trials. This right here should be comforting to us that God is in control at all times. This uh, right here is a part of our Christian hope. And verse 24 uh, lets us know that whom God had raised up, having lose the pain of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. In other words, a God who is in charge released him from the terrible a death and raised him back to life again. For death could not keep him in the grave. And we see here, uh, Peter, uh, he begins here with that public proclamation of the resurrection uh, at, at, at a time when, you know, it was uh, freshly verified. They were uh, a part of that many witnesses. And we see uh, later on in this same chapter how this was a powerful statement because many of the people listen to Peter's words. Those uh, who had been in uh, Jerusalem uh, 50 days earlier at the Passover, and uh, many have uh, seen and they have heard about uh, the crucifixion and the resurrection uh, by now. And Jesus' resurrection was the ultimate sign that what he said about himself was true. Listen, as believers in Jesus Christ, without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we would have no reason to believe. And thus, uh, Peter, he presented uh, the total sovereignty of Almighty God alongside the complete responsibility of men, of us. We have a responsibility to be that witness, to tell of the goodness of Jesus Christ and his purpose for coming and our hope in him. 
And again, uh, when we talk about uh, this legacy uh, piece and, and leaving legacy, materialistic a legacy for our families, this right here is a reminder that the most important legacy that any of us could ever leave for any of our family members is to introduce them to a life in Jesus Christ and have a personal relationship with him and to grow in it. Growing and witnessing. Growing in our own personal relationships with Jesus Christ and be a witness to this dark and dying world to come, to turn from their evil ways and to come, turn, repentance, to repent. Repentance means turn, turn from what you're doing and the way you're going and turn back to a way of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ lets us know that he's the way, he's the truth, and he is the life. No one can come to the Lord, the Father, but by Jesus Christ. One way, that's it. He will now go to section three and it will deals with bold witnesses. Verses 29 through verses 32, verse 29. And it says, men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. And, and Peter here uh, get uh, these listeners' attention to think about uh, what he was saying, that David wasn't referring to himself when he spoke these words I have quoted. For he, meaning David, died and was buried, and his tomb is still here among us. So he could not be talking about himself. David was pointing to the coming Messiah, someone who was greater than him, and that is Jesus Christ. And if we remember uh, when Jesus uh, was with his disciples, he told them this in Luke uh, chapter 24, uh, verse 44 through 45, he said to them, then he said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. So Peter knew what he was saying. Verse 30, therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. 31, he seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. And again, a Peter, he continued to remind his listener of uh, what was going on. He reminded them that David was also a prophet and he knew God had promised with an oath that one of uh, his descendants would sit descendants would sit on his throne as the messiah verse 31 he seeing this before spake of the resurrection of christ that his soul was not left in hell neither his flesh did see corruption and peter uh, let uh, he let them know that uh, David was looking into the future and predicting the Messiah's resurrection. He uh, was basically saying that uh, the, the Messiah 
would not be left among the dead and that his body would not rot in the grave. And uh, the emphasis here is that Jesus's body was not left to rot in the grave, but was in fact resurrected and glorified. Verse 32, this Jesus had God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. And so along the way, we see how a Peter uses a Psalm of David to show that Jesus is David's a descendant, that God promised to be the Messiah. David here identifies uh, his Lord as someone whose body would not decay in the grave, would not rot in the grave. And now uh, that they heard about the prophecies, now it's time to put that in action. They were to be witnesses. They were eyewitnesses of Jesus's, uh, his death, and they knew about his resurrection. They walked with the resurrected Christ. Now is time to go tell about it. They uh, were to go and bear witness uh, about the truth of Jesus Christ, his miraculous works, and that he uh, indeed was the Messiah that they were awaited for. They had been waiting a long time for the Messiah to come. Now that he uh, came, they were to go and be a witness to the dark world. And same is true for us where we are today. All Christians should be out and about telling and sharing of the good news of Jesus Christ by way of words, deeds, or actions so this dark world can have some hope. And so, as we close our lesson, let's take a look at the Bible application. And it reads, People receive financial inheritance and can spend them quickly when they don't understand the purpose of that inheritance. And the sacrifice it took to ensure it Similarly, the news is rife with reports of Christians who devalued their spiritual inheritance in pursuit of money, fame, drugs, or other elusive riches. What are practical ways can we help others see the value of protecting their spiritual legacy for future generations. One of the way that we can do so is by giving them the word of God, introducing them to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Only what we do for Christ will last. The Lord is looking for us to be committed to him and uh, to follow through on his word. We see here how Peter became a man who kept his word. Peter was committed to carry on where Jesus left off. And we as Christians should take on that same mindset that is to carry on, to pray and ask God to give us the strength and the guidance to help us to be committed and to be steadfast and to be unmovable and always about the works of the Lord. And so as we go through this week, let us have an aim. And that is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ that he saved, that he delivers, and that he sets free. And that he is our eternal hope. And this will conclude our lesson. If you have heard something that was helpful to you, please give a like, share, subscribe, or even to leave a comment 
But most importantly, remember we are building the kingdom of God together one lesson at a time. God bless you. Until next time. Bye-bye.